Yes, my viewers and subscribers, welcome back to another episode of Jamaica Politics Uncovered, where you get all your political news and views, honest opinion and honest reporting. Today, guys, I want to thank you for returning. And for those who are newly subscribed, thank you for joining. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the breaking news about Mark Golding reshuffling the PNP's cabinet. So guys, this is very interesting because right now, I would say that this PNP cabinet is the worst performing cabinet in the history of any politics or any political party in Jamaica. Why do I say that? Guys, the truth of the matter is Mark Golding has demotivated the political organization called the People's National Party. The 87-year-old People's National Party from 1938, if my maths is correct. He has demotivated the base and he has demotivated the members. He has demotivated the entire PNP hierarchy and every, everything affiliated with the PNP. The youth arm, the patriots, Mark Golding is basically a mood killer. So, Yes, so the people them went at the cabinet, may go through them one by one in a short while. But the truth of the matter is when you're not a leader, you are just not a leader. Mark Golding is not a leader. Mark Golding does not... Uh, listen, I don't even want to be too brutal because my truth can be very raw and I don't like to be mean for no reason. Mark Golding is not a leader. Mark Golding doesn't even have a good command of the language, the political language, the language of Jamaican leaders. He does not have a command or grasp of the issues. He does not have a command or grasp of what makes the Jamaican people tick. Otherwise, the PNP would be leading out right now, far out, based on the performance of this government. Okay? So let us look at what is happening here. I want to remind folks first of a statement in politics that says a government is going to perform as good or as bad as its opposition. The government is going to perform badly if the opposition is weak and has no caliber. The government is going to perform better when there is an opposition there that is doing what they're supposed to do who are holding them accountable. And it doesn't matter how many seats you have in the parliament. It's, it matters your voice. It matters how well you communicate with the people. It matters how well you speak and how well you make yourself visible and the things that you are saying. So based on the performance of the government, they are performing based on the opposition that is there. And it's the truth. And all who study politics, students of politics, only know this statement to be true. Why? Norman is in parliament. And although he's in opposition, he leads the House of Representatives. All the major legislation that is passed, he's the author of them. 13 strong. The PNP made their presence felt. Not yet the majority, but their representation was clear. And so in 1955, the people ushered in a new era and the man with the plan. And there's a complete transformation of the Jamaican economy. To the old agricultural sector, you had now an expanded and modern tourism industry, tourism sector, an expanded manufacturing sector and a new bauxite sector. Critical institutions were formed, Bank of Jamaica, uh, Jamaica Tourist Board, perhaps the most significant social programs in that period, which were transformative of the whole of Jamaican society, the most significant of that being the introduction of the common entrance, which opened up the educational system. When I understand what was just explained, guys, 13 strong. And look, there's impact. It's not about making up noise, really. It's about making impact. It's about commanding respect. It's about understanding how to communicate with the people. Now, I know that some members of the PNP are going to be listening to this, including 
perhaps some of the people in the shadow cabinet. And I don't want certain people to take offense to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to undermine everybody in the shadow cabinet because I know that there are some people who have what it takes and they understand the issue and they're there for the right reasons. What I am saying is for those people, they are demotivated and therefore they're not performing. And that happens when you have an organization with poor leadership and poor structure, you are not going to get any productivity. And that's what it comes down to. Now I am going to go through the cabinet um, shadow members and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. So I understand where I stand and what I am saying. Everybody knows that there's two factions within the PNP. The faction leading is the Rise United Movement faction. And they're a full political experiment because they're all people who lost their seats. If they were so good and so strong, they would not have lost their seats or at least not lose so badly. I am talking about people like Dayton Campbell, um, Peter Bunting, and several others. Well, let's go down the list and see what Mark Golding did. Before I go on, let me just make something clear. When I say Rise United Movement and calling it a separate political party or a party forming in the PNP, look at what it says. Rise United Jamaica. It does not say anything about the PNP. It's called Rise United Jamaica. A new political party was forming within the People's National Party. Okay, It is an internal election that this happened in. It said nothing about PNP or anything to that effect. It's called Rise United Jamaica. I want to them have them logo that is different from the PNP. So here's Mark Golding making the announcement that the shadow cabinet would be, would be reshuffled. And then here is the list of the positions that the people hold. Now, before I go on, let me first tell you that Lisa Hanna is not mentioned on the list. Likewise, Dr. Morris Guy. And no big deal. I mean, Lisa, who I believe is one of the greatest assets to the People's National Party, and the only persons who would disagree with that are from the Rise United Movement camp because they do not like Lisa. Anna. And it's okay. Everybody not going to like you. But nonetheless, um, she is the biggest asset right now to the PNP of this time. So clearly, everybody knows that Lisa was not going back for representational politics for obvious reasons. You can't perform well when your party or members of your party keep bullying you and undermining you. And Lisa doesn't need to get herself muddied by the politics, internal politics, right? So she was not mentioned to be in the shadow cabinet. I think Dr. Morris Guy is also leaving. So clearly... He's not on there either. So here we have Mark Golding calling himself the leader of the opposition and defense. And then we have Angela Brownberg replacing Lisa Hanna, which that is kind of shocking because Angela Brownberg, she really doesn't have a presence to command that portfolio. Nothing personal against Angela. I'm talking strictly politics here, not a personal attack. It's the politics and how I view each of them. Senator Donna Scott Motley, she would be com competent in my view on justice. However, the way I heard her uh, debate, the proposal of the government to increase the time, the punishment for capital punishment for, I'm sorry, capital punishment for murder, um, for certain murders. I don't like the fact that Donna Scott Motley was so lenient on that issue and that shocked me because of the level of crime, violence, particularly murders in Jamaica. Something drastic needs to be done. And I'm not sure why Donna Scott Motley, a woman who is an attorney and somebody who I respected all these years, that she would take that position to be lenient on such an issue. But it's the Mark Golding led PNP. Natalie Nita Garvey, local government and uh, participatory democracy. She's okay. She's been there a while. She's pretty experienced. She, you know, speaks with conviction and so on and so forth. Information and public communication, Nikisha, Nikisha Burchell. Nikisha Burchell is Bunting's side chick. You see him with her more than his own wife. I don't know why she's even in the cabinet, but 
she was a part of the undermine, the sabotage team against the PNP with Golding, Bunting and those guys. So that is her reward. Um, Fitz Jackson, um, shadow minister with our portfolio with special responsibility for foreign for, uh, affairs concerning Portmore. That's appropriate. Um, Fitz is experienced. He speaks with conviction as well. He's respected and so on and so forth. Finance and the Public Service, Julian Robinson, MP. I am not so sure that Julian Robinson is the right person for this portfolio or maybe he's just demotivated because of the leadership of the PNP. Reason being, in a time like this where Jamaica faced, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and almost all economies in the world were impacted negatively, Julian should be speaking more about this new economy or a new direction for the economy to improve the climate for the people in Jamaica. And Julian is not, he's not speaking out, speaking up. When they talk in Parliament, it's like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to do this because we're getting paid to do it. But there's nothing really of impact, in my view, that is coming from Julian on finance. You have the SSL situation. They're just the, the banking situation where these banks are ripping off the people. I may not understand them, but Julian, um, I don't even know if he needs some coffee or just a leader who would motivate him. Dayton Campbell, uh, Agriculture and Rural Development. First of all, Dayton Campbell lost his seat. He was the member of parliament for a rural constituency and if he understood anything about agriculture and rural development he wouldn't have lost the two-term seat Dayton Campbell is very toxic Dayton Campbell led the most divisive destructive campaign in the Rise United movement when he led Peter Bunting's campaign which smeared and defamed other people which damaged other people Dayton Campbell also is mixed up in court now where he was suing people for calling him pedophile and suing people for exercising fear commenting. And he now is being sued for defamation from Daryl Vaz and two other people in the Jamaica Labour Party. He is now claiming fear commenting. So Dayton Campbell is very baga baga and should not even be in the cabinet as he's immature, lacks emotional intelligence and behaves like an underdeveloped male. Member of Parliament, Anthony Hilton, I think he's capable of this portfolio. It's just that he's not very outspoke, uh, outspoken these days and not being heard too much. I don't know why that is, but I'm going to move on to Dr. Andre Harton. Dr. Andre Harton, same thing, um, just demotivated from where I sit. I don't hear anything from them. Most people don't. Janice Allen, same thing, because the party's leadership is so poor, um, no matter what people say, it's like nobody's listening and nobody's hearing. Deborah Hickling, I don't really know much about that person, to be honest. Waverly Hines, for a man who was a cricketer and stuff like that, I'm actually surprised that he's not more outspoken, that people don't really hear much from him. He run for the seat in Anova, which he lost. Um, I, I've never heard him spoke. I've never seen him on a platform. Never heard anything from him. Um, Sophia Fraser Beans, she is competent on the environment and um, ecological heritage thingy. But I think, again, the demotivation thing may be playing a factor. Peter Bunting should retire from politics. Um, I don't even know why he's here. Peter Bunting is the first man who went and cried to the nation that he could not fix crime. Went in the diaspora, labeled cartel as um some kind of minister society when he should not have done that but rather come tell the diaspora what he was doing as a minister of national security rather than to put a citizen of jamaica who was not charged for scamming like he was telling the diaspora that cartel was driving up scamming in the country use cartel as a scapegoat for his incompetence plus bunting destroyed the people's national party by farming the Rise United movement within the PMP movement. Senator Damien Crawford on education and community development. I think Damien Crawford is capable in that portfolio. But again, I think the undermining, sabotaging, people are afraid of it still within the PNP. And I think people are just, you know, either afraid or demotivated. That is playing a factor. 
Dr. Alfred Dawes, Health and Wellness. I don't know about Alfred Dawes. Um, he's a doctor. I think he may be able to speak on health and wellness, but he doesn't really. And the, 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 the Mark Golding effect on the PNP, again, may be playing a role there. Um, Alfred Dawes tried to go to Portmore to, to sit in a seat and he was met with immediate um, resistance and that just didn't work out so well. Patricia Sutherland, Social Transformation and Social Protection. Patricia Sutherland is the president of the women's movement in the PNP, which is extremely, um, it's just not doing anything. It's, it's, it's giving lame. It's giving, I don't exist anymore. It's giving, I have nothing to offer. Patricia Duncan tried for a seat, I think, two or three times unsuccessfully. I don't know why, she, what purpose she serves. You see, in politics, who you surround yourself with and by has a lot to do with your success. Dennis Daly, Denise, sorry, Denise Daly, gender affairs, persons with disability and inclusion. She's capable, but I don't know why um, Floyd Morris is not there because he has a disability as he's a blind person. And I think that, you know, he would be probably more fit to, 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 to take on that portfolio. Senator Gabriela Morris, um, I don't know what she contributes because I think she's supposed to be the president of the PMP YO, nothing going on there. These people who come in like uh, Gabriela, they're just hangarounds of the Rise United movement. She was a part of that whole bunting thing. And so um, I don't think people who joined that campaign had any caliber, still don't, because majority of them lost their seats. And she was put in the Senate by Dr. Peter Phillips and really hasn't contributed anything. Philip Paulwell, uh, energy and climate change. I think Philip Paulwell is capable of holding that port portfolio. I think that the condition, the climate within the PNP, it is so bad that even with Powell and his experience in that position, just would not do it for the opposition collectively. Ian Hills on water. Ian Hills is one of the most destructive members of the PNP who came over from, from the Jamaica Labour Party. Ian Ailes disrespected a man like, um, God rest his soul, D.K. Duncan, run him out of the constituency. I mean, the list is just so long. Ian Hills is just toxic. Um, Richard Azan lost his seat like Ian Hills because they joined the Rise United movement. So I don't really know what Azan can do for roads and works. Mikhail Phillips on transportation and mining. I think Mikhail can speak on that and, you know, speak with some form of conviction. Um, Lothan Cousins, same thing. And housing and sustainable living. Senator Dr. Floyd Morris, I think he has the wrong portfolio. I think he should be where disability and inclusion is so he can advocate for those people. But guys, um, collectively... The problem in the PNP right now is Mark Golding and Peter Bunting. Those two are the ones leading this whole thing. And they're leading it to nowhere because they cannot motivate anybody. And because of their behavior and attitude toward the party, run away so, much, so many people from the party. I mean, it's just really sad to see what it comes down to. But you know what? A lot of these people were already in the cabinet, right? And when you have education... You have crime and everything else. Were they speaking or were they speaking and not being heard? They were there before. What difference is it going to make now? I want to just throw this in there, guys. Why Mark Golding wouldn't put a man like Raymond Price, who is so astute in there, is beyond me, you know? So listen, I hope that the people at the PNP, the supporters, the my everybody, will just tell Mark Golding, say, listen, it's not giving PNP. It's not giving the party of Norman Manley, Michael Manley, and so on. It's just not giving. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up now. Don't forget to keep sharing, subscribing, turn on your notification, and keep it locked here to Jamaica Politics Uncovered. 
by yours truly. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.